Yo, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Um, today, we're going to be taking a little look at what's in this box. Um, just a bit of a backstory. Ever since I upgraded my system, obviously I changed from Windows 10 to Windows 11 as well. I've been having trouble, like with my internet connection, obviously the PC is running on an Ethernet cable. But I've been having an issue where when I first turn the PC on, the internet will sort of drop and then reconnect for like the first sort of 20 minutes, half an hour. Um, I've tried a few fixes and nothing seems to be working. Obviously, like I've changed the cable, um, I've changed the duplex speed of the, the network adapter, I've reinstalled drivers for the network adapter. Um, I've tried changing LAN settings on the PC, um, WWAN settings on the PC or WAN settings um, and just nothing seems to be fixing it. So the only other thing I can think is that the Ethernet sort of socket on the motherboard is dying. Um, so I've had to pick up one of these just to check. Um, so this is a this is a gigabit um network card that obviously goes in one of your PCIe lanes. Um, now it's only a it's only a cheap one. I paid um seven seven ninety six for this on Amazon. Um, so this is it here. It's only tiny. Um, obviously a little heat sink on the controller and then just an ethernet port. I don't know why they haven't put any lights in there. Like what's the point in having the holes cut out? Um, and obviously you get like the frame for the back of your case and they give you a smaller one as well, um, depending on what case you're running. So I'm going to show you all putting this sort of in the system um, and I will after that, I will obviously test it not on camera to see if it's made any difference to see if the internet's still disconnecting and whatnot. Um, and then I'll get back to you and let you know. Hopefully it fixes it because it's driving me insane, these connection problems. Um, now obviously, a few sort of details on this. This is a gigabit um, network card, so it'll let you do up to gig down speeds. Um, there's not really a lot to say about it. It uses the RTL 8111G um, sort of chipset on the card. Um, I don't know a lot about network cards and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, like I said, hopefully this fixes it because the problem is driving me mad. So I'll be back in a quick minute and I'll show you us installing the thing. And we're back. Um, so you'll have to excuse how dusty those bottom fans are. Um, the system does need a good clean. Um, there's no like mesh filter on the bottom, as you can see. Um, but yeah, well, I'll get around to that later day. So basically, I'm going to be putting the network card into this PCIe lane here. Obviously, the GPU goes in this reinforced one. I'll be putting it in this one. Um, now, some people might be thinking, well, hold on a minute. This is PCIe X1 times 1, whatever you want to say. And obviously, these that's an X16 slot. I think these are X8 slots. But this will still work in it though because PCIe Express lanes are all backwards compatible. Um, so this will work anyway. So basically what I now need to do is stick this in like, <clears throat> would help if I had the, there we go. I'd help if I had it open. Um, so stick this in oh it does not want to go in there we go and then just give it a little posh like that and 
so that is that in that lane as you can see obviously I've taken my GP out um, and then we'll basically just need to put a screw in to secure it which isn't easy doing one-handed especially when your magnetic screwdriver is garbage um, see if I can get it to bite quickly screw really does not want to go in um, let's see if I can hand tighten it even for now um, hold on a minute the, the bit for the screwdriver is a bit too small it was big enough for my GPU screw but not for not for that one um, tch -tch -tch -tch. Uh, it would help if I could find another one. Let's see if this one's big enough. Oh, that one's also too small. What a stupid size screw. Definitely not easy. Might have to see if I can just stand the camera up a second like that. All I do is two handed. Um, right. So, as you can see, that is now plugged in so then basically what I would have to do is unplug the neat ethernet cable as you can see out of the back and then plug that into the card <clears throat> whichever way it goes in If you're wondering why there's a bit of the case just like hanging off there, it's um, I had to cut it ages ago. Um, but yeah, really, why? What a stupid thing, man. So, by the looks of it. These pieces of the case back here look like they might be too thick and I can't get the ethernet into its socket. So I can see me having to cut another one off here. Uh, let me just put that back in there for a minute. I have to spin the PC around quickly. Oh, bloody hate computers sometimes. Um, try and spin this round without having to put the phone down. So, yeah, as you can see, it's too low down and it's been covered up. What a stupid design for a case. And this is what happens when you buy cheaper cases. this back out oh I know why it's because I've loosened that one and I've not snapped it off um, now I can't even get it out 
I wish case manufacturers had stopped doing these stupid snap off PCIe covers. You can drop them in the back of your case like this one here and you can't pick it up to get it out. Uh, stupid things. That's a stupid thing. Alright, so we'll put this thing back in now. Like so. Now it's plugged in, so now can we get the ethernet into the back? <laughs> Maybe, but it doesn't click in like a normal ethernet does. So then, what we basically do now, make sure that's in fully, which it is. I find it weird how this PCIe lane though, this didn't snap back like it does on your GPU one. Oh, my so then we will put our GPU back in, like so, and then, how close is that? Yeah, it's not too bad, it's not too close. Um, and then we will <clears throat> it's a heavy GPU this as well that's the only problem um, obviously as some of you might know I'm using a an RX 6800 but the XFX model, like the Swift and the Quick, and the heavy graphics cards. Um, so let's just get that secured in like that. And then we will plug back in our DisplayPort cables. And believe it or not, I actually have one HDMI as well. But so I had to jump cut because it was just easier to get them in two handed rather than one handed. Um, but yeah, so, let's see if this network cable actually works. Now, let me see from here. I yeah, can't really see from here if the lights are on on this network adapter. Which they are not, but it is connecting apparently. Um, so we will see. Uh, but now we are getting an no internet symbol. Of course we are, there we go. to network and internet settings ethernet to connected uh, answer default gateway yes so what we will do now is we will do a speed test and we should be around 920 meg down, 910, 920. So, yeah, we're around the 900 mark, so the speed is fine. Um, the ping is 
floating around the 20 millisecond mark. Upboard should be about 110, yep. Yeah. So that's looking fine. Uh, yeah, so I will basically put in the description below if I have had sort of any more trouble with my internet connecting and disconnecting. Um, but yeah, that's basically how you fit a network card uh, into your system. Like I said, don't be don't be worried about putting it in like a full size sort of PCIe lane. Like I said, it, it's all backwards compatible. Um, probably made that look a bit more difficult than I needed to, but that was more because I don't have the camera on its tripod. Um, I was obviously holding it, so trying to put it in with one hand is a bit more difficult. It will be a lot easier for you with two hands. Um, but yeah, if I'd say if you're having problems or if your Ethernet port on your motherboard is gone, then just invest in one of those um, one of those cards, uh, network cards. Here's the one for mine. As you can see, I paid seven pound ninety six for it. It's just a cheap Chinese one, but it'll do the job. Like I said, it still uses a real tech controller, so my, like my motherboard's Ethernet port uses a real tech controller, so it's not like it's using some cheap god knows what controller it's not um so yeah like i said i'll put down below in the description whether it's still working or not um we've got another couple of videos uh coming up soon um within the next two weeks we will have another couple of controller reviews coming because i picked up an 8-bit do or an 8-bit do controller uh, i picked up a, an ultimate 2c um, and I picked up a Red Dragon keyboard because someone commented on my MSI keyboard review asking what it was like compared to a Red Dragon board so I picked up a Red Dragon board to do a review on and we'll compare that to my MSI board that I'm currently using um, and then we have picked up another controller which is a, a Vader 3 Pro or a Vader 4 Pro so when they all get dropped off I will be doing reviews on them in the next week or two so yeah, for now guys, I will leave this video there. Thanks for watching. Please hit the subscribe button. I've noticed today that we've dropped two subscribers. Um, and if this video helps you out, leave a comment down below. We'll catch you all in the next one.